uh, we're given the assignment for that afternoon. And God is always good. Amen. Yes. And drop something to us here that we want to share tonight with you. Turn to Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Amen. You know me. I'll be finishing them for you. And that's always good. Okay, tonight we're going to be speaking about learning how to wait on the timing of God. Learning how to wait on the timing of God. I believe Ecclesiastes points that out in the verse which says, two think there is a time. time. There's a season. A season, yes. And a what? Time where we purpose under the heaven. But we're not going that way today. We're going to look at Psalms 27. You have to say amen. 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 Something don't happen. Wow, your voices. Amen. <laughs> well, that's not the one. Okay, you have Psalm 27? Yes. All right, turn to verse number 14. Verse 14 says something very interesting. What, what, what's the title of the lesson tonight? Learning to wait on the time of God. Okay, what does it say? Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now there's one word that's used twice in that verse. What is it? Wait. Wait, so if it's there twice, it must be twice as important that we learn how to wait. wait. And wait on who? And in your waiting, you're supposed to be what? Be of what? Good courage. Good courage. I think what happens with us, sometimes if we learn how to wait, if God takes too, too long with it, we become discouraged. But tonight, God is going to teach us how to wait on the timing of God. We're living in a time where we just can't wait. We just, oh no, I, I learned how to wait. No, you, you didn't learn how to wait. You just had to wait. <laughs> Not that you learned how to. You didn't have any other choice. You just had to wait. Now, growing up, and we all have grown up. Some are still growing up. But there, we were just molded in such a way as young folk not to wait. And we went through this, I can't wait. See? I can't wait until I'm 16. <laughs> Why do you want to be 16? So you can drop. So I can't wait until I'm 16. Then if we were little and 
Christmas was on the calendar and it was January, you began to say, I can't wait until Christmas. <laughs> so we have come through uh, a, a series of I can't wait to the point that it's even rolled over into our spiritual walk with the Lord because you want God to move for, your, for you and move in your situation. And you put a request into God and you can't wait, wait for him to answer. answer your request. You say, why is this? Well, because we've been, we have been acclimated, we have been socialized not to wait. When I was coming up, if you wanted food to be warm, you, I'm talking about when I came up. Now, I'm not talking about when y'all. See, I was, when I was growing up, my daddy worked every day as a coal miner. My mother stayed home and took care of the children. And we had what was called a coal stove. Yes. You had it too? Yes. Okay, the boys didn't have one. <laughs> Don't let them fool you. That was one of the most beautiful open parts she had for the pot that moved in and out. Don't let them fool you. That was a fireplace she had. But in my day, we had a coal stove. Yes. And a coal stove had an oven. And they baked in those ovens. Yeah. And the food came out marvelous. But one thing about the coal, coal stove is that if you got cold, you had to what? Wait. You had to wait. But yet you could put that food on that coal stove and it just came out tasting good. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, we can't put it on the coal stove. Instead, you put it in the microwave. And you hit, doop, 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 boom. And in three minutes, you have some piping hot food. But it's tasteless. That microwave takes something out of the food. Why? Because we just can't wait. We're at the point now that when I was growing up, that they used to have percolators mm -hmm. for coffee. Yeah. And mom would be downstairs, put that coffee, those coffee grounds in that little tin thing that went on top of and then put a top on top of that. And they had to wait. But that was some good coffee because it had to percolate before you could drink it. But yet it was good. But nowadays, they have this stuff called is this coffee. And many of you don't like that stuff. Because it just don't taste right. And now they've come out with this cure. And all you need to do is take the cure, the little thing, and put it inside, pop it down, and in two seconds you have coffee. <laughs> but that coffee still don't taste as good as the percolated coffee did years ago. But yet, with all this stuff, we become uh, acclimated to everything being instant, instantaneous, and to the point that when it comes to a request before God, we want it instantly. Not that we uh, can do anything about it, but we really want that thing to come to pass yesterday. Because that's how we have been programmed. A couple weeks ago, the dad just came to my house, and they were practicing, and uh, I decided to, to be nice, and I made them hammer. It wasn't a microwave ever. I didn't order it off from Wendy's. Big Mac. Full of dumb. I got the beef out of the refrigerator, seasoned it, put it on the grill, and uh, the ladies enjoyed those burgers. To the point that Inca says, boy, this is a good burger. And I said, you know what? I made it crack and I took my time to fry it on a grill. And she enjoyed it. He said, what does this have to do with timing? Because of the time that we live in, and because everything is at our fingertips in, 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 in an instant, we have lost the ability 
the way. No, no. We are challenged now to wait. But it says in four, verse 14, when it comes to the things of God, it says what? Wait. Wait. And do what? Be a good church. And then he reemphasizes, wait, I say on the Lord. So the Christians have no option but to wait. And oftentimes you say, why does God take so long to listen? No one ever thought that? Yeah. Because you want God to move when? Now. Right? Now. Even yesterday. Because we think what we need is so important. Mm -hmm. But why does God take his time doing things for the people of God? Because he can't stand you. <laughs> just don't like it. Just want to test you. Just make you mad. Mm -hmm. No, God has a purpose. And a perspective for his people in the in in the, the area of waiting. God has a reason for it. I have five key points, key key notes I want to share with you tonight. Number one, one of the most frustrating things for many Christians, one of the most frustrating things many Christians experience is trying to wait on the timing of God. One of the most frustrating things many Christians experience is trying to wait on the timing of God. One of the most what? Frustrating what? Many Christians do what? Experience. Experience. Experience is trying to wait on the timing of God. Many of you think God forgot about what you asked him about. Because you say it's taking what? Too long. To the point that you like to write God a letter. When you, when you like to email God. <laughs> and now time now they on the telephone, on your on your little uh uh, oh, what is it called? Cell phone? <laughs> There's a feature that you can hit that says resend. If we don't get a response when you text someone and they don't respond instantaneously, you get anxious and you do what? <laughs> resend. <laughs> and if they don't answer again, you call them up. And you ask them, is your phone not working? Now they just said hello. <laughs> Didn't they say hello? So right away, guess what you, you know? Oh, that the phone is working. But yet, you want to resend, resend, resend to the point that you make it. it now, if it's now if it's husband and wife, you make it someone hot. Someone gets hot on one side of that phone. I saw it. Can't you just wait? <laughs> Well, I don't know. You know how funny you're going to act. I want to make sure you got it. Why? Because it took too long to, for them to respond because of the timing. Mm -hmm. We are too anxious. We need to learn how to wait. wait. Okay. Now, that was the first keynote. The second keynote, you know, waiting on God's timing in our flesh. How about when you're in your flesh? That's all this stuff you're wrapped up in. You with me? Okay. Waiting on God's timing in our flesh can cause us to lose our patience. Is that true? Yes. yes. Three. Waiting on God's timing in our flesh can cause us to lose our direction and focus. Four, waiting on God's timing in our flesh can cause us to trust our flesh. 
No? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. All right. The voice of the mother. What did you get? And number five. Waiting on God's timing in our flesh can cause us to miss God. Okay? Got that? No. Number one. One of the most frustrating things many Christians experience is what? Two, waiting on God's timing in our flesh can cause us to lose our patience. Got that? Three, waiting on God's timing in our flesh can cause us to lose our direction and focus. Waiting on God in our flesh, number four, can cause us to trust our flesh. Well, God ain't going to move, but I got to move for him. He taking too long. I think he forgot. In fact, I think he fell asleep. <laughs> and the word distinctly tells you that God neither slumbers nor sleeps. And Number five, waiting on God's timing in our flesh can cause us to miss God. You got it? The key point in these five uh, keynotes is in our flesh. Which tells you most of our problems with that timing comes from our flesh. flesh. It's that flesh that's messing you up. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to ask me, well, how am I going to deflesh myself? <laughs> <laughs> well, go home and get a potato killer. Is that going to help? <laughs> no, because you're going to say more ouch to anything else because you are in the flesh. flesh. But people of God, you, not are, you are not only flesh, but you are spirit. spirit. And you need to learn how to trans. Uh, transport yourself from walking in the flesh to walking in the spirit and that is the first first step in learning how to wait on the timing of God. For the word of God says for now we see through glass darkly but the face to face you are known, you, you come to know even as you are known. When that perfect has come, which is the Spirit of God, that which is apart shall be done away. You start seeing things clearly when you walk in the Spirit and not in your flesh. Your flesh will make you do stuff you ought not do. Your flesh will make you use the, will make you use the, uh, the, uh, the repentance card every time. Because when you sin against God, you need forgiveness, so you have to do what? Repent. Because that's what makes it all better. Okay? All right, now. We must know, and more importantly, we must know, but more importantly, understand who God is in our lives. We must learn what, who God is in our lives. Okay, let's go back to Psalms 27. Who is God in our lives? Are you with me? The first verse of Psalms 27 says what? The Lord is my light, my salvation. Who shall I fear? Okay, okay, you can put it through that. Let's go back and listen again. In unison. Who is the Lord? The Lord what? Is my light and my salvation. What? Whom shall I fear? It tells you right now who God is. He is your light and your salvation. He is your what? And he is your salvation. And because of that, the next part of that scripture says what? Whom shall I fear? Who, why are you afraid? Why are you walking around here being afraid? If God is your light and your salvation, you have nothing to fear. That's who God is. 
That is who he is in our lives. And because God is so prevalent, because God is supposed to be so prevalent in our lives, verse 2 tells us when the wicked, wicked even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to flesh. What happened? They stumbled and fell. Because who was on your side? God. God, I don't care what comes up against you. God is your refuge and your strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. Yes. But yet, we forget that when trouble comes, we get fearful and forget the fact that if troubles come, it don't last always. There's a time for you to suffer through that. But at the end, God will deliver you. Yes, thank you okay, now. God's timing in our lives is driven by his eternal, I'm sorry, God's timing in our lives is driven by his eternal perspective. It's God's eternal perspective. God is not concerned about your hearing right now. God is concerned about your eternal position with him. Because this life is what? Temporal. But the life to come is eternal. And that's what God's looking for. Us, as far as it comes to eat a eternal perspective. Are you understanding this? Mm -hmm. Okay, someone said Jesus, and someone says, Do you understand what God said? <laughs> yes. Amen. See, back in my time, we said amen. amen. But we've gotten so sophisticated now that we don't say amen. We sit in, the, we sit in our pews and we, we learn to nod our head in agreement. We learn to grin with approval. But if the word is right, you're supposed to do what? Amen. Say amen. There are times, though, when uh, some folks just oh, listen, they don't want to say amen. But amen supports the word. Amen. But then some of you are just shy. You just don't want to say, I'm just quiet and shy. So you can stay quiet, shy, and nod your head. But I want some folks to join this amen call. Amen. Especially amen. if it's saying, God said the Lord. Yes. And you know why well, if you want to join the company of Amen, you can any time you get up and say Amen. But anyhow, God is always God's timing is always in the area of, of us from the eternal standpoint. His perspective is what's going to happen to us in eternity, not so much right here and now. He's going to fix right here and now, yeah. but he's driving us to our eternal life. Yes. And all that takes time. Okay? Everyone goes through tough times during certain periods of their lives. Amen. 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 As Christians, we know in our heads that God is working in and through those times. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, but often our emotions take over. Fear and worry may set in. Amen. Oh, we've got to be true. <laughs> situations, we must wait on His timing. Amen. 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 When we don't see answers to our prayers happening quickly or not in the way we expect. See, the trouble with the timing too, we expect God to answer in a certain way. Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, we know that God's going to answer. We know that God's going to give an answer. But we want God, we want to tell God how to answer. <laughs> Lord, I am looking for a husband. Amen. <laughs> Lord, I am being a good courage. Hallelujah. But Lord, he got to have some curly hair. He got to have some thick thighs. He got to be cafe or lay in color. See, that is what you're expecting. But God's timing is this. He might come in looking like little dumb. He might not have no hair at all. His teeth might be 
snipe on in the front. <laughs> but you know what? If you wait on God and live with courage, you can buy him some tea. Amen. And you can put him on a diet. And you'll have him looking like C Spar Run. Or you look up and say, where did he come from? That can't be the same one that came in here looking like um, Uncle Rebus. That can't be the same one. But if you would just take some time. <laughs> Let's get back to this. We don't see, see, you need to see what God's are, not so much what he is, but what he can be. Not what she is, but what she can develop into. A man to make a woman. Oh, please. I just said that the woman can make a man. What am I talking about? That she's going to come on. See, there's always money in bunch. I already said you can buy him some tea and you did not try to work on the other side about what he can do. <laughs> I said wait. It's all in the time. Anyhow, uh, when we don't see answers to our prayers happening quickly or not in the way we expect, we may wonder why isn't God moving for us? We might fear that thing, we might fear that things will only get worse. You ever been there? Oh, Jesus. Yes, yes, it's going to get worse. Yeah. Some people yeah. even get to the point of feeling that God has deserved them. Yeah. But God has, God has a perspective yeah. that he's always working for. Yeah. Fear is the enemy of faith and trust in God. Fear is the enemy of faith and trust what? In God. We know we should not fear, but sometimes it's easy to let fear and worry take over. For the word of God said, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Now, I didn't say fear didn't exist, but it said it didn't come from God. God. Okay. Fear is a natural human emotion, but God wants us to live a supernatural rather than a natural life. Amen. 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 Okay. We need the perspective of trusting God who works outside the realm of earthly time. Amen. God works outside the realm of what? Earth. Earthly right. time. He has an eternal purpose and perspective for us and all that we encounter. I'll say that again. God has an eternal purpose and perspective for us and all that we encounter. God knows what he's doing. He needs us to agree with what he's doing so he can do what he needs to do. Romans 8.28 says that for all things work together for to them that love God. God is working together things for good from the perspective of bringing about his perfect plan in our lives. Again, God is working together things for good from the perspective of bringing about his perfect plan in our lives so that eternity is in fact. Mm. But we usually look at, the, at this verse from a personal rather than from an eternal viewpoint. Imagine yourself in a very difficult situation, such as losing your job, your home, a family member, or your investments. As we trust God to work good out of our bad situations, we are watching to see how he will bless us as we go through our situation. That's okay, but his timing and purpose may be much greater than that. God don't know you lost your job. God don't know that you have no money in your pocket. He knows what? All of that, and he's going to let all of that work together for good. You say, well, why would he do that? Here's why God will do it. God may be looking at how many lives will be changed for eternity 
by the witness you have as you go through your hard times. I'm going to say that again. God may be looking at how many lives will be changed for eternity by the witness you have as you go through your calamity. People may be watching you and marveling at the peace and joy you express. Now look. If you go through bad times and your lips are on the floor and your face is hung low, that is not a good witness. No. If you're asking God, you say God can do this and God is doing that, God can provide, I need a car, God can provide a car, and you've got a scooter. <laughs> or pull your kids around in a wagon. That is not a good witness for the Lord. But if you just wait on God and be of good courage, she's going to strengthen your heart. But it's all in the timing. Some of us rush ahead of God to go out there and get lemon. When God has a better car for you. But you just couldn't wait. So you go down here to Jacqueline Joe, Joe's place. He gives you a car that will run for 50 miles only. <laughs> and you, and your job is 10 miles away. <laughs> so that means you can go back and forth five times, it's going to break down. <laughs> but that's how he timed it. <laughs> <laughs> he did it, he did not. He put sawdust in it, so it would not. So you get five good rides back and forth to work. And then once it's over, it begins to clunk. Whereas God wanted you to wait on him. But my credit was so bad. Supernatural blessings of God will cover up that credit. Where they pour those, those credit before it, that thing don't even show. Until you get your car. Then the next time you look at it, it shows up. <laughs> because it's all in his time. God's time. God's time. Okay. I guess people may be watching you and marveling at the peace and joy you, you express. That could lead to an opportunity to share Christ with them. And many of you in here have experienced that. People have seen you in the grocery store. People know what you've been through. And they'll say, how did you do it? then you can start bragging on God. Yes. And say, well, if he did it for me, then you, tell, you end up by telling him, sister, brother, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. And that, and he turned into witness. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Someone said, yes, I do. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Now, however, if you were to give in to fear or bitterness over the losses that you face, your opportunity to positively affect those lives for eternity might be lost. If you fall into complain, to a complaining spirit or let fear control you, people will not see the fruit of the Holy Spirit in you. If they see fear and negativity, they will not be attracted to Jesus who lives in you. Amen. Also, if you give in to letting fear take over, you may not be able to find God's will in the situation. You might rush it into an answer of your own making, and it could be the wrong decision. That's losing focus. Sometimes you hear the word, oh, you say, Lord, should I, should I buy this dress? And God says, oh. And you thought he said, go. <laughs> He really said no. Then you buy it and you can't fit in it. And then you say so. <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> Why? Because you went ahead of God. And let me tell you something. Every size 12 is not a size 12. That's right. Oh, God. Look. Oh, God. All right. I laid it on the women then, didn't I? I'm telling you, because you know what? If you buy a cheap 12, Lord, I'm right. it won't fit on strapping. But if you go down and you buy a 
something with Yvonne Bacon. <laughs> That designer then, you put on a 12, it'll be too big. You gotta go down to an eight. Because you got a good, a good piece, piece of food. But you need to use your time. Why go out there and get something that says one size fits all? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And that's a lie. <laughs> When you become frustrated, 
Begin to think about the promises of God and what He's already done. Yeah. That will give you the courage to wait on God and to continue to be in the good courage. The best way not to get frustrated with the timing is make a commitment to wait on God and to be of good courage. Make it your place. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I am going to be of good courage. Instead of saying, why should I wait on the Lord any longer? I will wait, Job said, until my change comes. And the change will come. But it's all in the time. Because Job said, all my appointed time, I'm going to do what? Wait until my change comes. We must also, in order to be encouraged about waiting on the Lord, is draw our strength from other believers. Go around people who are going to keep you encouraged that things are going to be okay. Yes. That time, time, timing is timing is, is, is nothing, nothing but time. And I have all of that. I'm going anywhere, and God will bless me in his time. And last but not least, when you're waiting on time, keep yourself encouraged by ex expecting the unexpected. What does that mean by that? Oftentimes on the jobs, oftentimes in our lives, we are wanting that much. That's all we want. And God has that much. Expect the unexpected. God will overrun you and overwhelm you with what he will do for you if you only learn how to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall do what? Strength in your heart. What's that strength in me? Strength in me, you'll see the success of your waiting. As you, get, as you succeed in your waiting, it strengthens your heart to wait some more. Yes. Knowing that God didn't forget you. That God has your life in his hand. And he looks at you from the eyes of eternity. Not just for that one situation. Because the trouble with God fixing one situation right here on earth, the trouble with that is you're going to get another situation. And then you will finally be satisfied over him fixing that situation. Then guess what? There's going to be another situation. You have to wait for God to fix that situation. Then all of a sudden there's going to be another one. But if you can get in your mind that everything in God's time, God's got this. And God is going to fix it in his time. Give another hand clap praise.